So if you're like Steve and I, when you go play, right, solidness of contact ultimately is the number one priority. Steve and I, of course, we want to score good when we go play, but the feeling you get when you hit the ball solid consistently yep. is the thing we're all looking for, right? And so anytime we're changing our swings or we're practicing for something, ultimately, I want to go on the course and I want to hit it solid. And one of the members we were working with, I'll keep him unnamed, um, expressed to us the same end goal. Like, yep. hey, I want to hit the ball solid. And Steve and I were working with him, and there's a piece that he was doing during his downswing that's quite common um, that we want to talk about, and something that you want to have in your swing, or at least make sure that you check this in your swing. If you're struggling with consistent, solid contact, this is a piece that you're going to want to pay attention to. So, see, if I take my setup position, yep. um, you know, the simple version of what we saw with this player, if we reference the club head and the left shoulder, yep. right, th this guy got into a pretty good position at the top of the swing. But what we saw really early in the downswing is this correlation between the lead shoulder and the club head. And what he had too much of was the left shoulder was going up too soon and the club head was going down too soon. Yeah, a little bit of cast thing. Yeah. A little bit of his head going up and back. Head up and back, throwing the club down with the shoulder up. Yep. And so we see this alignment all the time which is like, hey, by the time the hands are somewhere down near the trail thigh, a lot of the players who struggle with contact have the club basically in a line with the lead arm, don't right, they? And that's where the bottom of the swing or the bottom of the radius would potentially be right there. Yeah, yep. and they got to do all kinds of stuff now to try and hit a ball solid. Yep. Whereas like this picture of Grant will put on there, what we see with good players is by their time, by the time he has the, the hands even with the thigh, the shaft is still parallel to the ground, so the club head's much higher. Yep. And his left shoulder is much lower. And his head's more level, it didn't go up and back. So this is the bad that we saw yep. here. And do the good one more time. This is the good, Yep. right? Now, here's the whole point of why we're doing this video, is I don't believe, and Steve would say the same thing, that you're gonna be able to just feel that you can get into this correct position, right? If we say, hey, what we're looking for is to get to here. The shoulders are fairly level, just maybe a slight amount of tilt. The hands are in line with the trail thigh and the shaft's still parallel to the ground. Yep. What this student needed to do and what you're gonna need to feel is an over-exaggeration of those two elements, right? And so if we said the shoulder goes up, the club head goes down, what he needed to feel to get to level, right, to get into this delivery position was that his left shoulder stayed much lower. And went more forward. And went more forward instead of up and back. And I remember us talking to him and I was telling him, hey, that left shoulder dude's gonna feel like it's like kissing the turf. Yep. Like you're gonna feel wildly lower. Just because of how much he was really up and, he was up, this way. up and back, right. So he couldn't just feel that he had to get to normal. He had to overdo the down and forward. And he couldn't just feel like the hands were here. I told him, hey, your hands gotta get even with the golf ball. And I actually wanted him to feel like the shaft was still above parallel to the ground. Yep. Now that's over exaggerated. Yep. Right? He needs to feel that far. He basically needed to feel Alex Norn's practice swing. Yeah, if, you, if you've seen Alex Norn before, you're not familiar, you might want to Google that so you can see that, how wild he overdoes. And he's doing the same thing. I mean, he's trying to get to the bottom of the swing more forward because in his swing, he has a little bit of the unhinging yeah. and casting. As Google well. that if you're not sure who he is, or we can put a little picture of him doing his rehearsal. But so what we would do with this student is hey, let's go up to the top of your swing. And if you struggle with contact, try this yep. out with me here. Left shoulder goes down and forward. The yep. hands get even with the ball, and the shaft is at or just above parallel. Right, and, now, the you, and now if you do that from there, if you kept turning with those wrist angles, keep turning, keep turning, that's gonna help get the bottom of the swing forward. So you do that again. So we put like, let's stand right here. If we put like a little line on the ground, right? Sit up to that little line I just put. Yep. And do it, go down real slow again. So when you're coming down, your left shoulder's down and forward, you keep turning with the, with the wrist uh, hinge and keep turning, get the divot even more forward of that as you do that. So this, this was kind of the drill we were giving him, we keep turning, keep turning. And as he turns, he keeps moving forward. That's gonna keep getting the bottom of the swing forward. Compared to? Up and back, casting back here. and having the bottom of the swing behind. Now, no turn. to keep adding to that, as you do this, get one, get one divot in front of it Right now, try to do the next one, get it even more forward and keep getting the divots even more forward when you do it. That's really forcing you to keep moving more forward, keeping your wrist bent, and it forces you also to keep turning to get the bottom of the swing forward. So I think this was a, a good That's drill a great that, way we, to do that we made, um, made this golfer do 
to help get the bottom of the swing more forward, get his compression better. Yeah, and if I'm going down, what I'm feeling to get that, to have my low point here, right, or the club hitting the ground here, if my low point was normally back here, I'm feeling two feet forward yep. just to get to the golf ball. And this was the, the one, that, the case that we did for him because his, his head was up and back. Yep. His head was going up and back. He was casting the club. So he needed to feel, he felt like his head might have moved three, four inches forward. Yeah. When in reality, it was really just staying centered. Yes. And his wrist was just normal where he felt it was exactly like, like the Alex Norn picture. You have got to feel that exaggerated or it's not going to change. And the sooner you're willing to go that far, and then you check with your camera, right? right. Oh my, what it's going to be like, especially when I was first doing some of these too, is like, holy shit, yeah. I feel so far forward. And it felt like you're lower to the ground. I felt like I was yeah. going to kiss the ground. Right. And on video, it moves this much. Yeah. Now in the beginning, that's like hard to get over, but the sooner you get over that and you just start implementing it, you're going to hit it solid. Yeah. And the proof will be in the pudding. This guy that we were working with, the reason this title is like this, because he said, he commented back, hey, this transformed my game, transformed right. my iron striking. So as we're doing that, and I like that little add-on, I'm going to add one more thing yeah, yeah, to that. Ahead. You could take some alignment rods. Do your setup again, right? We could take some alignment rods, put them in the ground, and put them right next to your ear. Yep. You can almost have it to where it's like pushing your head forward, and then as you come down, your head can't go backwards. Yeah. And that also helps the feel of what you're talking about with the shoulders, how the left, shoulder, going this way. the left shoulder stays lower, the right shoulder keeps moving forward and turning, and that's helping to facilitate the handle to be forward longer to get the bottom of the swing more forward. And we were, Brendan and I were talking off camera here about like the handle being forward and back as we go. And right. if you could get to the point where you overdid that, you would be in the under 1% yeah. and you'd have really good new problems, right? Yeah. So if that like looks goofy, do it yourself and try it. And what you're looking for is, hey, I can retain these feels, I get the solidness of contact, and then you can always change the dial of the exaggeration, yep. right? And I think the last little caveat with this is, you know, this is pretty specifically ball on the turf, yep. irons. Yep. As driver comes in, the tilts change, yes. right? Longer clubs, depends on your speed some, but if we're talking irons, kind of mid to shorter irons, and you need more solid contact. And to get the compression right. Yeah, so remember that. Shoulder up, club head down, shoulder down, club head up. Yep. Right. You want more of the shoulder down, club head up piece. And, and that's keeping the head centered, really. You're not rocking up and back, which yeah. is the main, the main thing. And Steve had added, too, like as I'm coming in here, I'm posing this delivery position for you to see. I need to be able to turn with Continue that. Continue to keep turning so yeah. the head never goes back. Yeah. And that's going to help keep getting that divot more forward. Beautiful. So if you want solid contact, if nothing else, check that you have this good, right? Try this for yourself. Turn a little camera on. Uh, come check out kagornogolf.com, send your swings in, and the solidness of contact when you go play should be much, much better. Steve, thanks, man. You got Appreciate it. you. All right, thanks for watching the video. If you watched all the way till the end here, I'm going to play a little video with this hanger training aid. If you guys haven't seen the hanger training aid, and the reason why we put in so many videos is because it works so good. Not only do I use it all the time in our personal lessons, on our online lessons, but I use it with my own swing and legitimately me using this and hitting balls with it on, I've gained like literally a full club with all of my irons. The compression is much better. It really helps with the wrist angle. So check this video out. We'll put the details in the description down below. If you have any questions about the hanger, leave them down below. I'd be happy to uh, answer them because I know this is one of very few training aids I've tried that will genuinely really, really help your ball striking. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the hanger training aid. I absolutely love this. I firmly believe that this is good for every single golfer. This hanger here creates and controls what I think is the most important part of the swing, which is the wrist angle. It snaps right on. It takes me probably 30 seconds to put on. I can put it right in my golf bag. And best of all is you can hit balls with it. You can actually hit balls with it. So I love this hanger training aids. Look at when I do that well, how that sits on my forearm. Now watch when I cut my wrist, how that comes off immediate feedback for where my wrist angle is at. No one that can have too flat of a left wrist. One of the few things that all good ball strikers have, we're trying to have, flat left wrist, right? Super easy to use, incredible immediate feedback with the coupon code gorgonogolf.com. It's only $59. You're gonna absolutely love it. We'll put all the details down in the description down below.